My name is Annie and I work for the Alaska Office of Boating Safety with the Kids Don't Float program. In this video, you're going to learn about how to be safe when you're on a boat, the three stages of cold water immersion, and why it's important to wear a life jacket. Here in Alaska, there are many different boating activities we can enjoy, like kayaking, power boating, paddle boarding, fishing, and water sports. If you really enjoy being out in the water, then you're in luck because Alaska has a lot of water. In fact, Alaska has over 12,000 rivers, 3 million lakes, and 34,000 miles of coastline. All of this water has one thing in common. It's cold. Because Alaska's water is so cold, it's important to take extra steps to stay safe anytime you're out boating. Before we keep going, I want you to think of three things you can do to help you stay safe next time you're on a boat. You can write them down if you want. Pause the video here and then press play when you're done. Ready? Go! There are many different ways you can be safe when you're boating in Alaska. For example, you can always wear a life jacket, be with an adult, help the boat stay balanced, and carry and know how to use emergency equipment. Even when we do all those things right, Sometimes accidents still happen. Some common boating accidents in Alaska include capsizing, swamping, ejection, and falling overboard. These types of boating accidents can happen very quickly, even to people with lots of experience who are being safe and careful. So we need to know what to expect and what to do to increase our chances of survival. So what happens when you fall in the cold water? We're gonna answer that when we talk about the three stages of cold water immersion. The first stage of cold water immersion is cold shock response or initial reaction. When you fall into cold water, you might experience a gasp reflex and you could start to hyperventilate, which basically means your breathing will be hard to control. During this stage, you might feel scared and you could even start to panic. So the best thing to do within the first few minutes of falling in water is let your life jacket float you on your back, focus on your breathing, and wait for the effects of a cold shock to pass. So how do you think a life jacket could help you during the first stage of cold water immersion? A life jacket can keep your airway, your mouth, and your nose away from the water so you will not accidentally inhale water when you gasp, which could be dangerous. The second stage of cold water immersion is called cold incapacitation. Within approximately 10 minutes of being in the cold water, the muscles in your arms and legs will start to go numb. Have you ever been outside in the snow until your fingers got so cold that even zipping your coat or opening the door became difficult to do? Why do you think that happens? When your body becomes very cold, the blood vessels in your arms and legs start to constrict or get smaller, and so there's less blood flow moving to your arms and legs and they become harder to move. This shrinking of blood vessels is called vasoconstriction. Because this can happen in as little as 10 minutes, it's important to prioritize the most important survival functions first. What would you do first if you fall off your boat? Check your life jacket to make sure it's nice and snug. Call or signal for help by waving your arms above your head or using a tool like a radio, phone, whistle, mirror, or light to get someone's attention and let them know you need help. Next, assess the situation and make a plan, such as reboarding the boat, swimming to shore, or waiting for rescue. Remember, in order to use an emergency communication or signaling device after you fall in the water, you need to keep these tools on your person, such as in your pocket or clipped to your life jacket. Otherwise, you may not be able to use them when you really need to. The third stage of cold water immersion is called immersion hypothermia. Hypothermia is when your core body temperature drops. This takes at least 30 minutes. Although this can be dangerous, it is possible to survive hypothermia if you can get rescued or get yourself out of the water. So be sure to wear a life jacket and have a way to call and signal for help. To preserve body heat, try to reduce your movements. If there's any way to get some or all of your body out of the water as you wait for help, do it. A group of people in the water can form a huddle by linking arms, which will help them stay together and can slow down heat loss. Let's review. The three stages of cold water immersion are cold shock response or initial reaction, cold incapacitation, and immersion hypothermia. If you are trying to remember what to do during each stage, you can think of 1, 10, 1. 1. Within the first minute, get your breathing under control. 10. 
In the first 10 minutes, prioritize actions that may help you rescue yourself or get rescued by others. One, you have one hour or more of useful consciousness, so stay positive and do your best to reduce body heat loss. Remember, wearing a life jacket is your number one tool for increasing your chances of survival. Always wear a life jacket when in an open boat or on deck and make sure it fits. To learn more about life jackets, be sure to watch our next video called The Importance of Wearing a Life Jacket.